Hey everybody, this is Franco and this video is about the Stepper Online CL86Y Stepper Servo Driver and you'll see in the description of this video there's some hyperlinks to several different companies that I like doing business with. Uh, one of those links will take you to Stepper Online and it's a special link. If you click on that link and you choose to buy something from them they actually will uh, support my YouTube channel. So if you feel like shopping for some cool stepper products and supporting my channel, follow that link. If you don't want to, that's fine, uh, but you know, just want to put that out there. So what do we got here? This is the CL86Y closed loop uh, stepper driver. And as far as I can tell, this is the biggest, baddest uh, version of their closed loop stepper driver in this series. I, I don't know what they call the series, the CL series or whatever. It's it's the orange ones. The new ones are orange. And um, I got this. I, it's, it's the biggest, most powerful driver because I bought the biggest, most powerful motor that they offered uh, for the Z-axis of my Precision Matthews PM728 VT milling machine. So this is a 12 newton meter motor. And you can see what it says there. 12 newton meters, which works out to be like 1,700 ounce inches. It's a, a 6 amp motor. So this is a brute. This thing is powerful. Probably more powerful than I really need it, but figured, you know, for the little bit of uh, incremental spend, it was worth going with the bigger motor and driver. Running it with a 350 watt, 488 volt power supply, switching power supply. And, uh, yeah, so this, this driver is... It's similar to these CL57Y drivers, but you can see it's, it's much bigger. So, just to give you a size comparison, you can, you can see from the side, uh, the CL86 is much bigger driver than the CL57Y. And let me get my computer wake up. So, what, what do we want to say here? Um, nice driver. Most of the settings can be changed with dip switches. So, you really don't need the configuration software, although we're going to talk about that in a second. Most everything can be changed with a dip switch. You can change the pulses per rev, you can reverse the direction. Those are those are really the the two big settings here that you're going to want to play with. You're not really going to mess with switch one because you're always going to use pulse and direction. Um, and yeah, what do we have here? We have the input. This is where you connect the motors and the power. This is where you connect the encoder. These are the connections for the alarm circuit. Pending, you're probably never going to use. And of course, we have the uh, this MF is enable, DR is you know the direction, and PU is the pulse. We have some indicator lights on the side. Uh, back here, we have the dip switches and the USB port for programming. Um, documentation. That's what it looks like. It's very good. They pretty much tell you how to hook everything up. Uh, so they do a nice job with their documentation. I like the motors. They put these nice connectors on the motors. You don't have to do that. They come from the factory like that. So really good stuff. I like the Stepper Online website. They make it uh, pretty organized. It's really easy to shop. And I think the prices are fair. And what I've noticed is uh, they keep stock all over the world. So mo I would imagine most of the inventory is in China but you'll see they often have inventory in the USA so as well as Europe and I um, you know you can see on their website there's they, they have a couple of warehouses all over the world but if they have the inventory in the USA obviously the shipping is pretty reasonable if you need to get this stuff shipped in from China it costs more but uh, it's still not terrible and they ship with DHL I, th I believe that's usually who they use is DHL there's actually a few different options. When you're ordering, you can choose which carrier you want. But uh, when I placed my order, it came from China, and everything got to me in less than two weeks. And that was kind of in the transition where the whole COVID-19 thing was just beginning to ramp up here in the United States. They were kind of deep into it in China. I was expecting the shipping to be delayed, but it wasn't. Like I said, their, the products got here in less than two weeks. It was packaged really well, and um, yeah, just that part of the experience was very good. No complaints. So, um, software. So when I ordered these, I, I insisted that I needed the programming um, software and the programming cable, which 
you can buy the, this little programming adapter. I think it's like $23. The software is free. I insisted that I needed it. And the, the folks at Stepper Online were like, well, hey, why do you think you need it? We, you really don't need it. And I'm like, no, 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 I have to have it. I'm, I really know what I'm doing. I, I do this all the time. I need the, the programming software. So they were like, okay, fine, uh, but you really don't need it. And I'm going to be honest with you, they were, they were right. So th these drives right here, these CL57Y drives, honestly, you really don't need the programming software because everything you want to change is pretty much selectable through the dip switches and it's labeled right on the front of the drive so you really don't need the software for these. The bigger one, the CL86Y, does not have quite as many settings um, on dip switches. So there's, there's really only one setting that you might need to change and that is the polarity of the alarm output um, for me, I don't need to change it. All the default settings are, are just fine. But if you do need to change it, you use this programming software that they give you for free, and it works pretty good. You know, you plug it in, it, uh, you know, you, it reads the drive, that's what Read EEPROM does. Reads the values out of the drive. It says it was successfully read. Puts everything on the screen. And I'm not going to go into like really great detail about all the different settings here. For, for one reason, I don't really actually understand every single setting that's on here. But signal uh, function parameters, these are the ones where you, you know, you can change the polarity of the alarm. You can ch change the polarity of the enable. That's what uh, VMF is. And, and you can prob I'm pretty sure if you get on uh, MF options, what you'll find is uh, you can change some things about how the drive behaves when it's in an enabled state or a disabled state. Uh, other things that you might want to change, maybe. Uh, you can change like how much power it, it uses when it's at rest. So I believe right now, uh, locking current percentage, it's using 50% of the current when it's at rest. Those are things that you know maybe you really want, if you need to do some fine tuning, you can get in here and do that with the software. But I'll be honest with you, the default settings are pretty good. The it has this curve monitoring interface, which is kind of cool. You can come in here and uh, monitor different different things. So right now it's monitoring position deviation, but you you can. You can change this if you want to put the time into figuring out how this works. You can do it. It's telling me my voltage, RPM, all kinds of nifty stuff here that looks cool, but I really don't need to mess with, but it's there if you want it. So there's the tuning software. I bought it. I, or I bought the interface. The software is for free. I really don't need it, but it is available, and you can get all that from their website, and that's pretty cool that they have that figured out for you. Uh, I have this thing wired up to a... Centroid Acorn, which is one of the companies that I really like, and I feel very comfortable uh, recommending Centroid to, to people. And I think anyone who's doing a D DIY CNC conversion should at least consider them because they seem like a great bunch of guys up there in Pennsylvania trying to help the DIY community. This is a really fast board, real, real high quality signal um, generation capabilities and I like using it when I'm testing these drives. Um, how's the interface? Let's just talk about that really quick. So here's the power coming from the stepper motor. Here are the wires that go, the power wires that drive the motor. These are the cables for the encoder to the motor. And then here's all your signals, right? Um, so pretty basic stuff. And you can follow the centroid wiring diagrams. They tell you how to do this. But what, because this drive, okay, this is worth mentioning, this drive can accept five all the way up to 24 volt uh, signals. So a lot of stepper drives can only take five volt signals. That's okay. Five volts is more prone to electrical noise. But 24 volts, that's more like what you'll see in like commercial grade electronics. 24 volts is far less prone to electrical interference than 5 volts and when you're running on 24 volts on the centroid board you can come right off these screw down terminals it works great. 
if you're doing a, a five volt interface, you, you got to get a little breakout board. You come out of the DB25 uh, side of the centroid if you're running five volts. But 24 volts, you can come right off these screw down terminals. And that's nice because it sort of simplifies things here with this. So what do you do? You bring from the, the 24 volt positive, right? That's the same 24 volts that powers your centroid acorn, which by the way, the power supply is included with the acorn. It's a good deal. But you bring your 24 volts up here and all your positive, your, your MF positive, direction positive, and pulse positive. You just jumper them all together with positive 24 volts. And then what you do is you bring the negative sides of the, um, those signals over to the acorn board. So let's just talk about um, you know, the red wire is my pulse or my, my step, right? So the red wire is there in step one. I know it's upside down, but you have to bear with me. The orange wire is direction negative, and that goes to uh, DR1. And then the green wire is, uh, it's enabled. They call it MF, but it's enabled. So the, the negative side, the green wire, comes over here to enable one. And those are your three main connections to um, control stepper drive. It's that simple. I also have the alarm signal wired up. And the way that works is that's basically um, a loop. It's basically a switch is what it is. Uh, so the way this works on the acorn board is you bring uh, these inputs on the acorn are, are set up so you could use different voltages. If you want to use 5 volts, you could use 5 volts. If you want to use 24, you can use 24. Um, so I'm using 24. So I'm, br I'm bringing 24 volts up to where it says 24 volt in. So that's basically that's feeding power to all these inputs. So all these inputs have 24 volt positive signal that they want to send out, right? So that's what I'm doing. I'm using it's called input number five. I know it's upside down, I'm sorry. Input number five, I'm bringing over to the positive side of the alarm circuit. And then I'm taking the negative side of the alarm circuit back to common on the acorn board. And that's it. That's every connection on the uh, CL86Y. That's every connection you need to interface one of these drivers to a, a centroid acorn. So let's check this thing out. This thing, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I did another video recently where I was checking the performance of the CL57Y. It was good. Um, the the CL86Y actually has higher performance. So let's go run a little program here. This is just something, I'm going to reset all this and start all over. If you watched my other video, you know what I'm doing. All this is going to do is run the um, motor up here at a high RPM. That's all this is going to do. So let me fire it up and uh, you'll see what it's going to try to do here. So we're, we're, we're slowly, we're slowly ramping this thing up. So it's set to 4,000 pulses per revolution. And the way I have my software set, um, my inches per minute is equal to revolutions per minute on this motor shaft. That's an unusual setting. You won't normally set your at centroid software up that way, but I did it for the sake of simplicity. So 4,000 pulses per revolution, right? That's where I have my, so it takes 4,000 pulses to make one revolution. And right now, this thing is going 2,000 inches per minute. And it has no problems doing that. So let's just crank it up a little bit here. I'm just going to use the feed rate override. So that's 3,000 inches per minute or 3,000 RPM, which it's doing it. Now, this is kind of a weird setting. You're really never going to need that kind of speed, honestly, in a DIY CNC application, but I. I like to do this to these stepper drives and stepper motors because I feel like it's a really good test of their abilities. Um, yeah, so 3000 RPM, it's still reading those pulses just fine and uh, you know, that's at 4000 pulses per revolution too. So we'll just keep going until it chokes.
So we're over 3,500 RPM. Oh, right around there. So it, it makes it to 3,600 RPM, and that drive is still functioning properly. I, I can tell just from the sound of it, to be honest with you. I know that doesn't sound very scientific, but I can tell just from the sound that it's reading the pulses. And if you watch the other video that I did on, on these drives, you can see all the different things I do to check these um, drives to make sure they're not miss missing pulses. But So that's impressive. That's fast. I mean, that's... I'm not... Generally, you don't want to use one of these motors as a spindle motor because they're not designed for that. But that's impressive. So if it can do that, it's going to do a great job running as an axis motor. And chances are, so right, right around there, there's a thousand RPM. It's a thousand RPM. That's probably what your, what this motor is going to sound like when you're in a full rapid, something like that. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Now, I, I don't really have a good way to torque test this. I can tell you, if I grab a hold of this thing, I, I'm not going to be able to stop it. It's a 12 newton meter motor. This thing has all kinds of grunt and power and torque, so it's pretty cool. Um, let's check something else out on this thing. Let's just stop this. And uh, so we have uh, an alarm circuit on this. So I just I just want to show you what happens when you alarm this thing out. And the easiest way for me to do it, if I if I wanted to, I could put a wrench on this thing and I could just keep turning it, and it'll fight me. But if I overpower it, it'll generate an alarm. Um, I can't do that one-handed, and I'll be honest with you, this thing has a lot of torque. I don't know that I'm going to really get the upper hand on that motor. But what I can do is disconnect the encoder cable, and I generally can do this and get away with it without damaging anything. So the encoder cable is now disconnected. So what I'm going to do is try to command a move. Oh, it already alarmed out. It, al it already alarmed out. And uh, what that did is that generated a drive fault on the Centroid Acorn software. And that's exactly how you want this to work. So that's the beauty of a closed loop stepper system is uh, you just send all the instructions to the driver. You let the driver do whatever the driver needs to do to make sure that the motor shaft is rotating as commanded. Um, if it cannot achieve the command, it's going to generate an alarm. It's going to send that signal to the acorn, and the acorn's going to stop. And that, that's, that's exactly what you want. And I'll be honest with you, for a DIY application, even some commercial type of applications, this is, this is more than adequate. So this is the benefit of a closed-loop system. Uh, if you know, the closed-loop system is going to try to compensate and correct and pr do exactly what it needs to do to uh, achieve the command it uh, move, but if it can't, it throws an alarm and you stop. Where an open loop system, it just kind of, it, it might miss steps. It gets all messed up and, and out of sync. And it just keeps running. And you don't know it until you get to the end of your part and you see that your, your part's messed up. And uh, then what do you do? It's too late. Where this system, these types of systems, the alarm out. And it gives you a fighting chance at saving your part. All right, well... I hope you enjoyed that. Um, check out their website. These, um, I'm really liking these orange CL series drives, and I think they are a great combination for Centroid Acorn. If, uh, I know there's a lot of Centroid guys out there, and um, I think this is a good pairing. And yeah, so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them. I try to answer them as quickly as I can. And thanks for watching and be safe.